Hey everybody, it's Jill Kay, functional nutritionist, owner of Down to Earth Wellness. How's everybody doing this lovely Friday? I'll give it a few seconds for a couple people to join. So let me know, is this you? Are you feeling burnt out? Are you dealing with low energy? Are you pressing snooze more often? Um, are you needing a nap in the middle of the day? Are you having cravings because your energy is low and you need something to boost up your energy? Are you craving coffee or stimulants? Today I have a really good little topic we're gonna talk about. Five energy hacks for more energy. Gonna help you right away to have more energy so that you can do the stuff you love and have the energy to do the stuff that you love. So if for those of you who don't know me, I'm Jill Kay, I'm a functional nutritionist. I help um, outdoorsy burnt out women beat their burnout, have more energy so they can get back to doing the adventures that feed their soul. And I do that through a holistic and functional health approach. Just make sure that everything's working. Hopefully we're live. Hopefully I'm on the right account. That would be funny. <laughs> so we're going to get right into it. If you are dealing with fatigue and burnout and high stress and low energy and you're not sleeping well, or maybe your hormones are feeling out of whack, we're going to look at five energy hacks that right away can help you have more energy. So we're going to get right into it because I want to try to keep it short and sweet. I always end up talking longer. Um, so we haven't done an IG live in a while either. I want to say it's been a few weeks. I was busy packing and moving and relocating and then settling in. Um, drove a long ways to where I'm at now. If you need an update on that, I have a, a post on Instagram you can check out from June 16th or something like that. So give it a read and you'll, you'll get the scoop. So anyway, feeling more settled in now. I've got my salt lamp. There, there she is. And I really need a thing that can hang your phone so you don't have to hold it with your hand all the time because it's hard to do an IG Live and hold my phone. <laughs> but anyway, that's where we're at. That's what we're working with. So what are the five hacks if you're dealing with low energy? First of all, before we get into the hacks, if you haven't grabbed my free fatigue fix checklist, be sure to grab that. The link is in my bio on Instagram or it's all over my website too. But be sure to grab that. That's a really good way to get started if you're dealing with low energy. We have to dig deeper. We have to look upstream. We have to see what's going on. But you can grab the fatigue fix checklist to get started. There's some really good strategies in there. Now the five energy hacks for more energy. First of all, number one, light up your inner clock. Our body runs on a clock, the circadian rhythm. We have the cortisol awakening response in the morning when the sun comes up, our cortisol goes up, or it should be, and then it goes down. As the sun goes down, our cortisol should decrease throughout the day, and that can affect our energy and our rhythms um, throughout the day. So what we really need to do is get sun on your eyeballs in the morning, no sunglasses. Within the first hour of awakening, get sun on your eyes, step outside and get that nice, powerful sun. Even if it's cloudy day, that's still really powerful light. So get that light. Um, on your eyes, that's going to help to reset your circadian rhythm, regulate your inner clock, and kickstart your cortisol awakening response. Your cortisol awakening response we like to see increase in the morning with the sun. It's also in charge of your immune system function, energy, mood, brain clarity, but it's a good uh, signifier of, of your immune system health, a good cortisol awakening response that climbs first thing in the morning. And how do we work on that? We get outside for the first hour, you know, for five, ten minutes, and within the first hour of waking, or shine really bright light on your eyes to tell your body that it's the morning. And now the same thing is true for the evening. We want a dark, dim house, a dark, dim room. The bedroom is dark. We want to wear blue blockers just like these or the swannies that are more tinted orange to block that blue light at night from the TV, the screens, the iPads, all that jazz, even the garbage lighting in the house, those fluorescent lights. We need to dim it down, have natural lighting, uh, maybe some salt lamps, and have that darkness at night. So, so again, we're working with our circadian rhythm. We're working with uh, the rhythms of nature. It's, it's bright in the day, it's dark at night. Well, it should be, unless you're in the Yukon, then you're dealing with 19 hours of sunlight. And we have to work with that, right? We have to work with that and use blue blockers at night and uh, to break down or avoid that blue light, will, which will stimulate your pineal, pineal gland and messes with your melatonin production, which will mess with your sleep and your circadian rhythm and therefore your energy. So that's my tip, light up your inner clock, work with your inner clock, morning and night. I hope that resonates. Let me know if you have any questions. That's really gonna help with the sleep-wake cycle as well, and it's gonna help you with sleep, which will help you with energy as well. Um, if you have any questions, just let me know. Number two, I'm a broken record. It's all about blood sugar. It's all about blood sugar. We wanna balance our blood sugar to balance our energy. It supports our adrenals, it supports our cortisol fluctuations, it supports our insulin, it supports our pancreas. When we have balanced blood sugar, we're ditching that roller coaster 
of blood sugar climbing when we're eating really refined foods and then crashing if we're eating sugary foods and then we're on this roller coaster we might have energy crashes sugar crashes cravings headaches hangry if we start balancing our blood sugar we'll get off that roller coaster and have more balanced energy throughout the day and less energy crashes and more consistent energy how do we do that we start with breakfast so start with breakfast then we'll worry about lunch and dinner as we go but if we're creating habits we want to create them gradually and um, slowly so start with breakfast 20 to 30 grams of protein in your breakfast and make sure you have some fat and some fiber so uh, dark colored fruits whole grain toast eggs um, what else healthy fats healthy fats we've got avocado we've got nuts and seeds we've got hemp seeds flax anything you want for breakfast a nice um, big bowl of there's really good yogurt I had today yogu yogurt with some gluten-free granola, some nuts and seeds, some flax, some raspberries, kind of get in the whole mix, or a nice smoothie with protein, fat, and fiber, um, eggs on toast, an omelet with some veggies in there. You're getting that nice protein, fat, and fiber to balance your, your blood sugar from the start of the day. So that's really, really important. And then that will help for uh, the continuation of your day with your energy. So 20 to 30 grams of protein, and make sure to have fat and fiber in your meals and then we'll look at lunch and dinner and do the same thing depending on um, how much protein you need everyone's different these are just general guidelines uh, but really starting to balance that blood sugar not just eating really carbohydrate heavy meals or really refined carbs or sweets and muffins and um, like uh, yeah refined carb meals or snacks that aren't really rich in fiber and fat and minerals we want um, nutrient dense foods which will help to balance our blood sugar all right so that's number dos number three is get grounded daily if you want more energy this is an important hack get grounded daily so step away from the computer and the technology take breaks if you work from home if you work downtown if you are whatever self-employed or whatever your situation is got to get away from the technology got to get away from the computer and get grounded we are nature we're from nature we do really well when we get back to nature so you know if you can get outside you know 15 minutes a day in nature or 15 minutes twice just get into nature moving water trees forest grass sit on the grass um, or get your feet on dirt it's very very grounding and can really help to lower those stress hormones can bring stress hormones down within 15 minutes and can really bring in a sense of calm uh, a sense of ease it can also improve our energy improve our immune system really really energy boosting for sure but get outside, get into nature on those coffee breaks or the lunch break and just um, nature bathe. Really, really important because we're always around technology and computers and a lot of electronics and EMFs and that can really impact our energy as well. So definitely consider getting grounded daily, however you like to do it. If it's a walk, if it's sitting by the lake, sitting by the river, going to a park, playing soccer, just get your feet on the grass or the ground. Okay, that's a really, really important one. That's really gonna help to decrease stress and boost your energy and it's free <laughs> and the number four is hydrate your butt off hydrate 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 it's easy to do all these things are easy to do but do we do them right it has to be a habit we want your pee uh, light yellow to clear not dark yellow if it's dark yellow and you're thirsty that's already a sign that you are dehydrated and we need about eight to ten cups of water per day depending on your activity level more if you're more active less if you're less active but a lot of fatigue is connected to just simply being dehydrated. So we really want to make sure to have a uh, consistent water intake, maybe, uh, you know, 500 milliliters or two cups first thing in the morning upon awakening, try to break it up into certain things, two cups at coffee break or lunch break, two cups uh, after lunch, uh, two cups before dinner, two cups after dinner, if you want to do that, or some people have a big water bottle that has measurements showed on it, or they have a water bottle, like a stainless steel one with um, hair ties on it. So when you've had one bottle, you bring the hair tie, high, hair tie down to the bottom, and then you wanna have two or three bottles a day, depending on how big the bottle is, you bring the hair tie down to the bottom so you know how many bottles of water you've had. But it's really important to try to have filtered, good quality water that's gonna hydrate your cells, hydrate your skin, hydrate your body. And a lot of hunger sometimes is connected to just simply being dehydrated, or a lot of fatigue is very connected to being dehydrated. So if you're drinking herbal teas and everything like that, that's definitely going to hydrate you as well. Um, just yeah, coffee, coffee is a mixed bag. There's different opinions for that. Some people find it dehydrates them. Some people find it kind of hydrating. I would still drink a lot of water if you're drinking coffee. It is a diuretic. Um, 
so hydrate, 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 and try to have filtered water. We want that chlorine and fluoride and chemicals and pharmaceuticals and pills and medication that get into our water system. We want that out of our drinking water. So I like um, a carbon block filtration. You can get it for your whole house, a carbon filter, which is really, really cool. Companies do that for you, or you can get shower head filters. And recently I got a Berkey filter which is a really cool um, stainless steel water jug that sits on your countertop with carbon filters in it and you just pour water in kind of like at the office when you work at an office right there's those uh, water bottle things and you just go and fill it up um, except there's no plastic and no one's bringing any water to my house so I simply pour water into the Berkey it filters it throughout I don't know 15 minutes and now you have filtered water it holds like two and a half gallons which is like I don't know 10 liters something like that um, so that's really, really helpful too as well. So get that filtered water going and drink water consistently daily. It's really going to help you with your energy. The other thing is, is digestion. We always have to look at digestion. Number five is, are you going to the bathroom daily? How are your number twos? Number two is all about number five. Number five is all about number twos. <laughs> How are the BMs, the bowel movements? The quality of your digestion is going to Im impact your energy. Um, because we are not just what we eat, we are what we absorb, assimilate. Um, if we're not eliminating well, our elimination pathways are not open, we're not gonna feel good, we're not gonna have the best energy. We might have headaches, we might have skin issues, we might have hormone issues, we might have all sorts of stuff, but your energy is definitely gonna be impacted because we need those elimination pathways open and there's multiple elimination pathways in the body, but digestion is a key one. So are you going to the bathroom daily? What is the quality of your digestion? Are you dealing with heartburn, bloating, gas? constipation, diarrhea, are you having ra rabbit pellet poops or are you having diarrhea, which where are you in the spectrum or is it regular consistent digestion? Do you rely on coffee? And if you didn't have your coffee, would you not be going to the bathroom consistently? These are the questions I usually ask people and ask my clients. So how is the quality? How does your digestion feel after you eat meals? Um, because we need you feeling good, digestion strong, absorption strong, and then eliminating daily and regularly so that the toxins are going out and that will support your energy. If you need help with your digestion, just let me know. I always do that with my clients. Um, we always dive into the digestion component, the elimination pathways, because they're really essential to overall health, to energy, to absorbing your nutrients, right? So um, yes, that is an important, important topic is we got to optimize digestion. How do we do that? Different ways. Um, we hydrate. We lubricate with healthy fats. We eat lots of healthy fats. We hydrate with water. We eat lots of fiber, veggies, nut, uh, seeds, flax, um, dark colored fruits, whole grains. We eat lots of fiber. And then we look deeper depending on the uh, person and what they're dealing with. If they had digestive issues, we'd be looking at is the digestion underactive. We might add in some enzymes or hydrochloric acid or digestive bitters to stimulate digestion. Uh, is there constipation? We would look at why. Is there food sensitivities maybe? Or um, is there bacterial imbalance? Would we be bringing in a probiotic? Um, what's going on with digestion? And we'd also look at bringing in magnesium for some people to relax the muscles and also helps with digestion and uh, constipation for some people. So it really depends on the person, but it's all on a case-by-case -case basis. So I'm not giving any recommendations, but uh, we do just look at how is digestion and we try to optimize with food, lifestyle, and smart supplementation. And then if we have to get nerdy with science and lab tests, we do that as well. If, like say through a GI map test, we can see if there's any crazy bugs in the digestive tract that might be bothering you. If it's parasites or anything like that, we can dig deeper. And that's really the key is always to dig deeper. But overall, we got to optimize digestion and start with, you know, the basics, chewing your food well, limiting um, fluids while you eat your meals, incorporating lots of fiber, lots of healthy fats, um, moderate healthy fats, and good hydration, good eating habits, eating mindfully while you eat. Um, so that's really important. That is number five. So just to revisit the five hacks for more energy, light up your inner clock, work on your inner clock and your circadian rhythm, balance your blood sugar with your meals, get off the roller coaster, get grounded daily. Uh, number four, hydrate your buns off. <laughs> hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Say that five times. And number five is digestion. Optimize digestion, make sure that it's working well. Now, just remember that we can always um, dig deeper with a health assessment, with uh, smart lab testing, with looking at a GI map or um, Dutch test, whatever we need to do. The key is to always dig deeper and look at the full picture in each person on an in, in individual basis. Um, 
that's what I do in the wild energy deep dive. We do a full health assessment, symptomology, and then looking at some good uh, nerdy science if we need to look at nerdy science and lab tests. So again, if you're dealing with a lot of fatigue, we always have to dig deeper and also look at the adrenals, look at your thyroid, look at your diet, look at gut health. We can look at the whole picture. It's really key to take in all, all the pieces of the puzzle because everyone's a, a different individual with different things going on with their health. But these five hacks are definitely going to help you to have more energy right away. Um, and if you have any questions, let me know. Comment if you enjoyed today's video. Let me know if you liked it. And if you want more energy and you want to ditch your fatigue, then definitely book a free call. I do free strategy calls um, all the time. I have a few spots every week for a strategy call. So you can book that to get started. We can go from there. And yeah, I hope to hear from you or comment below on what you think of today's video. Um, if you do want to book a free strategy call, usually on Instagram, the link's in my bio, so you can learn more there too. Okay, guys, well, that's what I have for you for today. I hope you found it helpful. Let me know. I'll talk to you soon. I'll see you at the next uh, IG Live. Have a good weekend.